What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nomen stream today. My name is Josh Sherman, and uh, we're going to be doing some character work here on stream today. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all doing. May the 4th be with you. Um, we also have an amazing stream coming up after this with uh, Brian Matias from uh, ILM. We'll be doing a interview with him at noon. Is it noon? No, at 1, 1 p.m. Pacific. This stream runs till noon. So if you're here early for that stream, hi and welcome. Uh, hang out for a couple hours and, uh, you know, we'll be here. Is, is this the Star Wars event? No, Emily, this is not the Star Wars event. Uh, today we're going to be making some characters on stream for about two hours. And then three hours from right now is when we'll be having the Star Wars event. So you can come back or hang out either way. We'll be here for basically four hours today on stream. So that's what we're doing. Uh, this stream is the archetype stream where we create uh, characters in ZBrush and Photoshop and Unreal and a bunch of other uh, software today. Uh, so I'm going to continue the series that I've been working on, uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, hopefully you guys can hear the music and it's not incredibly loud. If it is, if my audio sounds terrible, please tell me. Please let me know, uh, and I will turn it down or we will adjust it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I'm going to show you my Trello board, the super exciting Trello board. <laughs> Uh, but basically, this is the, the previous characters we've worked on are these four here. I'll show you my art station in a second, and we'll hop, hop over to that. And these are all the pre other ones that we'll get to at some point, and this is the archetype wheel. If you've never seen this, this is created by Carl Jung, uh, and these are the 12 different archetypes that exist in all characters regardless. Uh, so, so far, we have done the character, the artist, sorry, the caregiver, the artist, the sage, and the magician. We wrapped that one up last uh, two weeks ago. And then last stream, we started the ruler. So conquering this little blue quadrant up here, and we're going to continue in those. Uh, and now I'll jump into that in a sec. Um, this is my art station, so you can see the previous ones there. You can follow me if you'd like. But you can see the previous uh, characters that we've created in this stream here. This one was rendered in Unreal, uh, sorry, in Marmoset Toolbag 4. And then this one when it loads uh, was this the first one I started doing in Un uh, Unreal Engine 5 which is pretty amazing and then this is another one that we did in Unreal 5 and then this is another one we did in Unreal 5 so the kind of goal of this stream is to spend a month creating a character so t 12 characters in 12 months is basically the goal and right now we're in May and so we're on our uh, our next character Let's see. That's pretty much where we're at. So that's that's my uh, art station. This is our working process. And so let's just go ahead and jump into ZBrush here. This is the ruler. This is the first actual humanoid character we've been made on the stream or will be making on the stream. Um, so we will continue working on this today. So you can see there's some sort of a Mobius-inspired reference from this character. Um, we're going to continue working on that today, and as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be focusing on the details, and we're going to be focusing on uh, continuing sketching the costume. So that's what we will be working on. My tablet is deciding to not switch to just this thing, so let me unplug it and plug it back in and see if I can get this thing to work. I don't really want to spend the whole stream sculpting with a mouse. You know, weird, right? It's thinking about it. I saw it move for a second. See a lot of people from YouTube here today. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you are doing well. See people from Twitch as well. You know, some Facebookers. Hello. Is that the right word? Facebookers? Uh, Mobius Dove does did love long hats for some reason. I don't really know why, but uh, definitely did. And uh, as people, if you're curious, that was something we were looking at last time. One of the key inspirations for this piece specifically uh, is Mobius. So sort of that flowing robes with some interesting shapes with this kind of headpiece. And I thought that was kind of an interesting, uh, you know, ceremonial dome shape that kind of was kind of cool. So we're going to continue working on this today. Um, just to show you every piece that I've already done and how we've got here very quickly. Um, this is a couple sub tools. This is a head sculpt that I created based off of the uh, planes, meaning there is a, under the tools, or sorry, projects, you can find these head planes, and this is what I ended up making this character on, sculpted it from that, and just kind of a basic face. Uh, we got another head piece here, right, what I like to do to make these kind of shapes, and what I'm sure I'll show this more today, is I will take 
an existing sculpt, and then I will deflate it and I will re-sculpt it. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. But basically, uh, let's say I have, I'm gonna hide the headdress and let's say I, I wanna make a new one of these. Uh, I would duplicate this, then I would go to my right side, I would go to my deformation tab, I would go to my inflate tab, I would say like negative five. And since there's a duplicate of this, you can now see that there's like sort of a perfect inner shell of this object where there's a really thin in this object, but very thin uh, element here. I'll continue to uh, shrink it, so just for demonstration sake, you can see it a little bit better. You can see how there's sort of an inside shell to this. And what this does, what this really is really good for, or the reason that I like to do this, meaning that there's sort of this inside version that's kind of now messed up, and there's this outside version, right? When you're working, and I turn off transparency and all that fun stuff, and I want to be on the inside version. There we go. This kind of allows me to have a base mesh that has topology exactly where I need it, right? So now what I can do is I can take my brushes or anything I like to sculpt with, move brush, I like to use the play build up brush, and I can just drag along the surface. And rather than having to create a base mesh, put it inside or do some sort of an extraction or something like that, uh, I can come in here and just kind of sculpt along that with the surface and say this is where you know, this is where I want my hat to be or whatever the, the hair that I want it to be or you know, I can switch to a move brush or something different and say you know this is the shape that I want this to be we're just making random shapes right now but we can make different shapes uh, with relative ease because we're not fighting the software you know saying where do you want this thing to be this is sort of like a Rick and Morty style hairstyle or a Dragon Ball but um, you know something that we could do that is very easy to do, and that's why I like this technique of, of duplicating something using that then as its new base mesh. The downside to that is that you do have the inside of the mesh is always there. So t sometimes when you view the meshes isolated like that, uh, it looks a little terrifying. So just something to be aware of. But it is a fun and for me very easy way to work. So let's jump into this today and let's get into some deeds. I'm going to delete this thing we just made because we don't need it, and that's fine. So again, today is character sketching and costume, so we're going to just kind of dial in. I think that the overall gist of the character is mostly there, right? We have, you know, the, the flowing robes and the, maybe even a general pose. We might go ahead and uh, block in, like, an environment or a quick setup here. So I'm actually going to do that and just append a cube. Just push it down and we'll scale it up. And we'll continue to scale it down even further just so that we have something to work off of it's not the most beautiful leg I've ever or foot I've ever sculpted but that's okay turn that perspective on yeah cool so here we go we got this I probably am going to do some form I was thinking a, a symmetrical wide shot uh, those are kind of things that I like so I'm trying to think now about things that could be in the background so I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this again pull it over to the side rotate it push it up and we're going to kind of create a little bit of a now that I'm thinking about this I would probably do this with other assets but we're going to start figuring out a framework of what we want to do Unreal's got this really amazing ability to have really wide and amazing vistas. So as I'm starting this, what I'm thinking is like, okay, maybe this is some form of a doorway. And I was starting this on the Sage where I wanted to have a shot that looked out the window and I was kind of struggling with it because I was actually struggling more with the character than the environment. And uh, I wasn't really able to achieve it. Apologies for the ice noises. But I was thinking it could be interesting. I like that the music takes like this sort of dramatic turn while we have this conversation. Um, something that could be like a grand vista with columns. I did explore the idea of some columns in that one. Um, and I think that could be interesting where maybe there's some columns or something. And behind them, this is almost like a portrait maybe. You know, they would have like, this is the ruler, right? Now they're, they're friendly. 
right? They're, they're not an oppressive ruler in this world, so this is somebody who genuinely cares for their people, uh, wants you know, everybody to be happy and healthy. And I think that maybe, let's see if I can use this tool here. So I want this to be like almost like a nice portrait. You think Art Deco combines with very good rulers. That's an interesting thought. trying to block out a shape meaning like if this was some form of like a column or something you know maybe it would be connected to a column as well this is really just for myself this isn't really a uh, geometry that's going to be exported or anything like that this is me just kind of playing around and trying to find a general vibe for the piece so that as I start working on it and continue to work on it that I know you know generally what I'm expecting to put in there this blobby mush that we have here will be replaced with better geometry later once we get into Unreal and that's maybe something we'll end up doing a little bit today as well as we kind of have an idea of what all this will be they didn't have any amazing chairs I don't think that's something I might want to look at though if there's any chairs or thrones or something like that Let's see if we can just log into the marketplace real quick and see if we can find a chair. I've been using Unreal to, to render all these. I mean, I could buy one, obviously. I could buy something like this. Very Mortal Kombat, though. This is super medieval. So maybe we'll find something different to use for that. We'll load up the Bridge app and see if there's anything already in there from the Quixel team. The medieval would be fine, but it's not really the vibe that I'm looking for. Even this sort of like just this chair here might be nice. So I want to have something that's behind the character uh, that they will probably be standing in front of. Could also do the thing where they're like standing in front of a couple things. Maybe I pose them so they're slightly looking off, you know, standing and not so perfectly mirrored. I think that would feel more natural, anyways. wants me to update the bridge. I'm going to tell it no for now. There it is. It's taking some time. Chair. I mean, this is like a weird modular chair. But this is our options if we want to not build a chair, not buy a chair. The music chair is interesting. I kind of want, like, um, I'm trying to find some specific references here. So, like, things that I'm thinking about is, like, not exactly this, but characters that would be standing full body. I was almost thinking like the presidential portraits, the American ones. I mean, even this one, where he's just kind of in front of a chair, or sitting with a chair, that's a little too much, right? But from the color standpoint, or something where they're sitting in front of something, from a ruler perspective, right? And then they're gonna have something around them that will probably be a vista behind them. That's sort of my goal. Uh, I love these. We gotta see the same artist uh, there. Uh, yeah, at uh, LACMA, I think it was the other week we gotta see these, not by not Obama's portrait, but a different one by him, similar color palette was really beautiful especially in person the pictures do not at all do it justice amazing artist but this sort of like portrait like the presidential portraits just look at presidential portraits 
this kind of a thing, right, where they're standing in front of an element with something far in the background. Something kind of like that, but maybe a little bit more regal. So something kind of in that vein is what I'm wanting for this. So, as I'm blocking this out, what I'm kind of thinking is, what, what are those elements going to be? How tight is my shot? Meaning, like, at the end, do I want it to be a shot that's kind of like a tall... Uh, frame like this. I kind of enjoy doing these frames that are very tall, meaning a three by one is like one of my favorite sizes. Really hard to find frames for and nobody else seems to enjoy them, but I like doing three by ones. I could do a very wide shot that could be interesting like this, or I could kind of just do, you know, a more 16 by nine, which is probably like this. You know, kind of a shot like this, or I could be very close, which is also fine. Um, and do something which is more like a portrait where I'm kind of closer on the character. So I'm trying to figure out right now as I'm, I'm blocking all this in what that will actually be, what the, you know, the, the character will look like, how close these elements should be uh, for that versus like how far away things are going to be. I kind of like this to be a little closer. And I could also come in and get some more columns or something in the background to make it feel like a space that they're in front of maybe. That could feel nice. And we'll probably just end up making some form of a facade that this will attach to. Maybe we'll put some big steps that go down there. Apparently I've lost the world. What's the reset button for that? Okay. that and then you won't see them but we'll see maybe there's some stairs out there and then just because we want to block this in now we might as well I'll show you a really amazing technique this is called <laughs> I just made this up but look we'll make some mountains in the background you know, the beautiful mountain peaks fjords in the distance. That will be in the back. Right. There's not real perspective on this, so we're not seeing it, but just kind of the idea that there's probably something like that's going to be out there. Um, This one? Nailed it. So this is all fakery for right now, but again, the idea of this, or at least the goal of this, is to have some form of just a visual that I can work with and ZBrush to say, you know, what is this going to look like in the final? What does this look like maybe you know, as I'm kind of working on it? So uh, not intended to be all beautiful looking all the time. I think that's an important note. I hear that a lot from students is like sort of the, um, what's the right word? The imposter syndrome. You know, the intimidation factor of feeling like when you're working on something that you have to be perfect every step of the way, that's a lie. That is a lie. You do not have to do, you don't have to be perfect every step of the way. There are phases in every production and every part of the process where it does not look very good, like at all. So do not feel like that is something that you have to do moving things out of the way because they're getting cluttered for me. Moving things out of the way, sorry. Alright, now let's get into the character itself now. We've got some of this other stuff up here we can start looking at. 
gonna move this one just a little bit. So this is gonna probably be what our frame is. I do love super tall ones, but I don't want to. I don't want to make that much environment. So we'll probably be something kind of like this, which will, which will be kind of a newer. Uh, you know, as I've been creating this series, I don't really have, except for maybe this one, like a, a more of a portrait vibe of a character. So I think creating something that will uh, stick out from that will be nice to make it stand out from them. May the 4th be with you. Yes. Happy Star Wars Day, everybody. Uh, for people that are joining and are, are hoping to see Brian Matias talking, that will be at 1 p.m., Pacific time, so you got about you know two and a half hours till we end up doing that stream, uh, but that is happening today. So feel free to hang out with us on the channel all day, and we will uh, be doing some fun stuff. I'm excited to watch that myself. All right, so I'm going to hide everything, even though we just spent time making that. I'm going to hide all that, and then I'm going to save this because we have it now, so I can go back to it and continue to reference it. Um, But now we're going to focus on the character. So last stream, we focused on blocking this all out. And I think we got to a pretty, to a point where I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, as far as like the overall gist of what the character will look like or could look like. But now the challenge that we're hitting, and this probably happens in a lot of people's work, whether they're doing concept work or whether they're doing character work and you are exploring a sketch, is that we're kind of now in the phase of, of needing to take the sketch and push it further, right? So that the things that we're hitting right now are, uh, for example, uh, this whole mesh is one mesh. So I stretched this and pulled this a million different times. I'm going to smooth it like crazy right now. Too smooth. And we also have that on. But you'll see it's all one mesh, right? This is fine for sculpting. This is fine generally. Um, but it might be more helpful to either break it into several different pieces. If we break it into a bunch of different pieces, we can control them manipulate them, texture them, uh, do all of that a little bit easier. Uh, or we can try to up this and continue to use it as a single piece, right? There's not really a, a wrong uh, way to do that, that we just need to choose what we're doing with it. So if we're going to choose uh, that we're going to sculpt this all into one thing, fine, let's focus on the sculpt and let's do that. We'll texture it, we'll detail it later, and we'll figure out how we're going to do that later. If we're going to break it into a bunch of pieces, we need to do that as well. And there's downsides to both, right? The downsides of, um, I don't like this song. It's so tense right now. Let's get past this. That feels much better. Is this character on the good side or a bad side? I, I would call this probably the good side, Ash. Or definitely. Uh, Rob, uh, you like the idea of a tall portrait with the ruler in front of their domain. That was kind of my thought too, is like them being able to be in front of their domain. Um, and kind of stand there and be proud of it and happy about it, you know? So that's why I kind of was looking at, like, those presidential portraits. But there's downsides to taking the character, and especially for concepts specifically, and splitting them into a bunch of pieces. The downside is time and speed, meaning I've already got the sketch here. I could up this a couple times or use Sculptress Pro, you know, and if I do that, as you can see, I can get to something that's not going to require crazy amounts of work for what I want the visual to look like, meaning if I'm not going to export this to something else, I can spend time sculpting, refining the design, and worry about that rendering aspects later. Um, the downside to uh, doing that is you're doing that basically that work of breaking it apart, uh, defining it, and doing all that fun stuff, you're doing that later, which is hard, right? It's not as easy to do that. Um, and there's some ex experiments I want to try, but I am going to try, as opposed to what I did in the previous ones, where I would break everything apart. I did that in the ruler and the sage and, and all these other ones. I'm going to take it and I'm going to sculpt the character as one chunk. And we're going to see how that goes for me. It may be a huge mistake, but something I'm wanting to try to do with character work, especially bringing it into Unreal, so this is a kind of a test ground for that, is how to... Um, keep as much of it as possible in one chunk. That being said, I do think there's going to be one big chunk that I need to break, and that's going to be this cape. This cape probably needs to come off, just so I can get a little bit better uh, definition on the cape. I'm going to undo all those subdivisions I did. Oh, this is where we were. 
I can get a little bit better subdivisions on the cape here. Uh, and I can also go ahead and um, better define what's underneath here. So that's my initial thoughts, but it might not actually happen. We'll see. Because um, as I'm kind of just sculpting it now, I'm like, well, I could just really tuck this in there. I, mean, I can just mask this off. Yeah, this is perfect intense music for this moment in time on our stream. Is anybody else doing some interesting creative projects, personal projects, class projects? We'd love to hear what everybody else is working on. Excited to watch the finale of Moon Knight tonight. I know it came out last night technically, but I'm not somebody who stays up super late to watch that stuff. talking to myself at this point, but I don't think I'm going to um, lower the resolution on this character. I think I'm going to leave it right like this. Hmm. I'm going to put me on myself on this side. Making a swamp restaurant thing. I like that idea. Hello there. Welcome. Currently working on a Van Gogh experience thing. That's interesting. I like that. Just practicing and learning the fundamentals for now. All good projects to work on for sure. I'm going to subdivide this. And we're just going to start getting into some details. Uh, what I like doing is once I've spent a lot of time on the forms, right? Um, so basically all last stream, we focused on primary forms, fundamental forms, the, the basic understanding of all that stuff, right? Uh, if you add a couple subdivisions in, those forms often, you know, if they're high enough res, will stay. So, for example, we, uh, on this hat here, we kind of sketched in, you know, some ideas of what this could look like. And even, like, these little lines and some lumps and some forms that are going to indicate something, right? Uh, because I spent the time to do that early in the sketch, I add my subdivisions now, you see that they kind of maintain. So what I like about this is I can come in, now I'm going to use just a basic standard brush, nothing fancy. I'm going to use the Damien standard brush, which is a nice carving tool. So that's kind of what those two uh, strokes will look like. And I'm going to come in and just start defining the sculpt now a little bit. So I know I want some form of a bill. So I'm going to use like the Damien standard brush to really tuck that inside. And I'm going to use the standard brush here to just start defining what this bill shape is. And this for me is actually one of my more favorite parts of the doing the designs because the silhouettes are cool and I like getting the initial energy and the understanding of what that is, what it would be, right? But this is the phase that you actually see the character come to life or you actually understand like what they're going to be like. And what the materials are and what the details are and all that fun stuff is really at this point. So. You can go crazy at this point, right? There's so, so many ways to do cool shapes, to do cool things. A lot of that's just trial and error. I will also, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up the previous version. So the one that I just saved a couple minutes ago. I'm going to load this up. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, this is a new, new version. Ah, going in to see the doctor in an hour. Nice. That's a good trip. That'll be fun. No spoilers, anybody. I haven't seen it, as have many, most other people. I was giving you Zant from Twilight Princess vibes. I haven't seen that one in a while. I'm going to keep it off my visual radar just in case because I don't want to steal potentially more things from that. But I love Zelda. So adding some of these forms in. Seeing so maybe do some repetition of those forms. This is where you can add that detail in. And I like to continuously kind of go back and forth and look in and out, you know, uh, zooming around the character to decide uh, if that's something that I want to be on there or not. 
setting photo Photoshop composite. Nice. I'm just going to add this in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this whole process on the whole character, meaning I'm going to go through, add a little bit of detail. I'm not going to be crazy about it. I'm not going to be super anal about it. I just want to go in and do sort of a first pass. A pass on top of a pass. after you. I'm willing to change the shape. I'm willing to explore new shapes. But you can see that the core kind of fundamental of it is still kind of there. I'm taking this music down. And the reason I want to try doing this for this character, again, I haven't done this on the previous characters. Usually what I do is I would take them, once I've got them, and um, you know, break them apart and do that little nice pieces of most things. Because I'm wanting to increase my speed a little bit. I'm going to increase my speed a little bit for costume characters and characters that have a lot going on. And often the process of just taking something and breaking it up into lots of things can be very tedious. Uh, I'm more interested in getting to the rendering phase for me because that's something I'm enjoying uh, more, more so than in the past. And that's because of Unreal. So I'm, try I'm wanting to get to that end process. I know that personally for myself, that I can find ways to you know, build a character out if I need to add more detail or whatever it is I need to do. And for myself, I know that, and this is kind of my goal for this character in this series, is find ways to get to the end product faster, and hopefully better. Using just some uh, build-up brushes here, I kind of like the idea of some like fabrics that are wrapped around the neck, as sort of a, a secondary layer. Uh, maybe something that has a lot of texture on the inside. This is something I can obviously play around in Photoshop or later in texturing with. But just the idea that there is something that has lots of texture. It's really the idea of you know uh, areas of rest and areas of detail. I think that's kind of enough, especially when it's not highlighted to show that, you know, we'll click on this so it's same. But there's some detail in there, you know, there's some interest in there, but we're not going to try to go crazy on it right now. Is the hat fabric? I think it's probably a fabric, yeah. Would you know any of the great ways to increase the contents of a portfolio apart from personal projects? One of your favorite ways is concept art competitions, but you can't find many. Uh, con competitions in general, I agree, are uh, a great way to build up your portfolio, a great way to try projects, to do things that you don't normally do, um, to give you requirements or restraints. I love competitions. Big fan. I was a huge fan of the Comic-Con contests that were done many years ago on uh, Polycount and Game Artisans. Huge fans of those. But those are uh, seemingly long gone. Uh, I think ArtStation uh, has their own challenges and contests now. I don't feel like they're widely publicized or promoted, but they do have them. Uh, I th see more, I think, on Discords 
and uh, you know, for not those aren't forums really, but like that type of community. I feel like Raf Grossetti is doing one. I think, or Patreons like I think Dave Raposa is doing some. I think I just saw on Dave's Instagram that he's doing some form of a competition. So that's kind of what I would probably check out. Competitions are great, you know, just you're asking about ways to increase the content. Uh, you can also, you know, create those things for yourself. You know, that's kind of for, you know, what this whole series is for me. You know, the me uh, you know, working on this series and having a, a you know, per, before this, before Archetype, there was a series called Art Jam that we did on No Man's Channel, which we did for almost two years. And uh, it was just kind of... It was a fun project, but it didn't really have a goal, right? There, it was a fun series, but it didn't really have a goal, and uh, of, of what we were making on stream, what the intentions were there, and so I think the point of switching to something like Archetype is that it does have a goal, and for for me personally, that's made it a lot easier. Where even if you look at like uh, my art station, if you look at the per even though I've been streaming for two years doing uh, artwork nothing on I felt like was uh, worth showing on my portfolio right um, but using something that does have a goal so making a character in a month or you know and having a theme for that I've made four things for my portfolio in a, the last four months so I agree that having some form of a goal is good right uh, you're more than welcome to use the stream use past streams use anything that we use here uh, for yourself as an accountability partner, as a theme, as a challenge, as a whatever you want. Obviously, it's not really themed for you in the way that it's a competition, but I think that there's an element there that if, if you're somebody who needs or wants sort of some push or guidance in what's going on, you're more than welcome to use uh, uh, us as, as that. Bit. I'm going to make like say these are gold or something. There's got to be some trim or something. Maybe it's even an embossed golden trim. Or I am starting to think about colors right now. some of this could look like. So I'm really just using the existing shapes. So this is the previous hat. I think from a distance you'll kind of notice that like this and this are not that different. There's some some shape change but in reality what I'm really doing is I'm just kind of coming in and defining the forms a little bit more or just saying what's in if it was kind of a previously blank shape you know now I'm creating a new shape there that def that really defines what it is from a form level not necessarily currently from a material or structural level but it is there This is needing something. Mostly because I'm fighting it, though.
do know that I'm mostly going to be focusing on this character from the front. So I'm not super concerned about the back. Eyes are one area that I would probably uh, carve in and uh, add actual spheres for the eyes. But I'm kind of feeling like I want to try this in a different manner. Uh, undo all the work I just did. I was just using Sculptors Pro to, uh, looks like I've already done that before though. Yeah, we're just going to do it with Sculptors Pro. Um, I'm locally smoothing and polishing parts of this model with Sculptors Pro, and what will happen is if I turn on wireframe, you'll see that parts of it are getting more uh, detailed, and that's because I'm smoothing with this Sculptors Pro feature up on at the top, so it's adding geometry to those local elements. It's also smoothing the actual model itself in those locations, uh, which is good. It will make it a bit more challenging later, but I think, again, the, I, the intent of this character for me is a test to see um, how I can create a humanoid character with a costume faster, get it into Unreal, and uh, see how it works. So I don't really need to go crazy on everything. I can smooth out some of this stuff. I am going to emphasize all these details. So notice that if I carve in too far, which I'm not going to, but there is that mesh in the inside. Kind of an interesting robot face right there. But um, just to note that that's how this kind of process is. So I do need to be somewhat careful about it. Let's do the lips now and the face. Uh, this is all dependent on the size of your cursor when you're doing this. So if it's a large cursor, it makes larger polygons. If it's a small cursor, you get smaller polygons. So I kind of go across the surface with like a medium small uh, brush and I just hold down smooth and that will smooth out all of that stuff there. And then for these areas that need more detail, I come in with a tight brush and I'll carve it in. Into these areas. I'm not going for a crazy photo real head or anything like this is again. I'll spend time in Photoshop afterwards. I do want to explore more painting in Photoshop too. How to take them and make them a little bit more painterly when you're done. But you can kind of see the difference. I'll go from this to this. So this is before and this is after. You can see a little bit more detail in there, a little bit smoother. And I'm really just using the Sculptress Pro features 
to um, dial in detail where it needs to be. Nothing crazy. So the goal is to do this on the whole character today. So obviously we have a lot of character to do, but we've already got a couple of the big pieces out of the way. We've got a, got a nice phase one done. Uh, apologies, I can't actually click on links with our software, so I can't see your work on Instagram. Uh, feel free to hit up Noman's admissions team, though. We actually allow for um, portfolio critiques. That's part of what we do. So they may be able to help you there. I feel like the shape... It's a little too even. Part of me wants to just like, this is going to look bad, but I just want to like pull it. Meaning, like, I feel like it's not as interesting of a shape as it could be. It's a little, this meaning, like, it's kind of like this size. Like, it's the rule of 50 50, maybe like this is roughly the same size and mass as this is and so there's something about that to me that is feeling like this should be smaller this should be taller this should be wider this should be something I'm trying to avoid any pointy hats for many iconography reasons even though it is effective Just flare it. I'm going to try the elastic brush. Yeah, maybe even just like the connection of that might help. So this is something I try to do quite a bit is I'm always kind of coming back in and reframing like the shape or the size of something. Sort of that more um, samurai helmet vibe on the back and the side. It's also sort of, even though they, there is no hair on the character, I could probably add some or try. Simulating that flowing hair shape is kind of nice too. So that's something I'll do quite a bit is basically go back and forth and say like this is what it was before and this is where it is now. I feel like this one is flowing better. Uh, it's kind of again this shape is now roughly this big and it's not really the same size as that anymore. Uh, adding the corners I think is being helpful. Uh, whereas before it was kind of the same mass stacked on top of itself. So we kind of talked about this before in previous streams about the idea of rhythm and uh, things within that. But that similarly sized boxes that are stacked on top of each other uh, don't add any interest. They're not interesting to look at. So the, the thing that I wanted to point out though, right from what I just did from the design process is that I didn't go to the in or I didn't start at the very beginning with this silhouette and shape in, in mind uh, a lot of you know, 2d designers in some of the more traditional ways I think that people learn from like um, 
starting with a silhouette is that often you search for the strong silhouette and then you work within within that. Uh, I think in 3D, you do that. You still try to search for the strong silhouette to begin with, but it's harder, in my opinion, because you know you can create a, a dynamic silhouette very easily in 2D by a couple looser brush strokes. And in 3D, often I find that I'm searching for it. Like I'm having to find it, I'm having to push it, I'm having to uh, generate it in a way that's different than what uh, a lot of 2D artists are able to do very quickly. So. For me, it's not a bad. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just recognizing the difference in what you're doing, and the, the tool that you're doing, and the strength in what you're doing. You know, the power of a 3D design is that you're able to move around it and, and create something that's very resolved, much more resolved than a 2D drawing will be. Often, you know, not saying there's not artists who can who can't resolve in 2D. There are, and they're incredible. And there's a lot of them too. But uh, in 3D, you're kind of resolving things from all angles and so sometimes that means you have to work a little bit differently in how you're going to approach something. I find that especially with internal shapes like even what I'm doing right now I'm trying to tuck this area in here I want it to kind of feel like it's inside that jacket rather than what it was doing where it's feeling like it's lumped onto it but I find that I'm often having to kind of fight for the shapes that I want in 3d it's really easy in 3d especially if you're doing concept art to accept shapes meaning this isn't exactly the shape that I wanted but it's cool and so I'll keep that but when there is a shape that you want, uh, it can be a challenge sometimes to like achieve it because it's you're having to work from it from multiple angles and all kinds of other things that make it just a little bit more difficult to do. I'm scaling this little brooch down because it was too large. What hotkey am I using to quickly hide and show the head subtool? Good question. Uh, that is the solo mode button. So the solo mode button is right above me right here. It's right here. Uh, you can create, I have a hotkey for this, but which is for me is control alt S. That's not right, alt S. Alt S is my hotkey for it. Uh, you can make a hotkey really easily by holding down control and alt, clicking on something. And in the top left, you're gonna see that there's gonna see something that says basically push your button for your hotkey. So if you, after you push, for me, at least on a PC, Control and Alt and click the button that you want to have a hotkey, you can change it there. So for me, uh, Alt S, and I use Alt W for transparency, which is uh, this one right here as well. Good question though. I kind of like this being rounder. I've sort of seemingly made it lose that ability. So I'm gonna make it have a little bit of this tie in from the top we are going to make it a more round object. All right. So I think we got some interesting little bits here. And I want to dive into this part of the costume now. About how it's going to tie in here. What is this? Is this a collar? Is it a, you know, all the fun bits of this. So I'm going to push, stretch that down a little bit so it goes inside. I want to be at a quarter million polys right now, so there's quite a bit of room here for us to continue. This is sort of why, you know, I was saying, if you choose to break it up into lots of chunks, you know, you'll have the time investment to do that. If you don't, you'll speed yourself up a little bit, which is what we've done, which is why we're at a more resolved state faster. But when you get to the point where you want to resolve something, you might fight the, the sculpture itself. 
because it's not broken up into lots of bits. So you're going to be sculpting. You're going to have more difficulty sculpting elements, meaning this seam here, for example, sculpting the seam and how I want it to go inside and uh, the actual details of that become a bit more of a challenge. That's okay. I think I want this to stick out a little bit more. It's getting a little too tight to the neck. Mm. Just a little bit, not a lot. Where am I thinking I will texture this? Good question, Rob. Um, I've been debating that myself. There's a technique that I used to like using quite a bit in Keyshot, which was you just render a bunch of different renders and then combine them. But I'm not sure how to replicate that, if or if it's even replicatable in Unreal, because that's been my main renderer. So the biggest hurdle that I've been having for myself in using concept uh, Unreal for concept is that everything needs to have a texture. Everything needs to have, to have a texture, and ideally everything needs to have a material that matches the material qualities. The Quixel Bridge obviously helps with that. Quixel Mixer helps with that. But those are, are better at environmental aspects. And again, the goal is to speed up my process. That's kind of what I'm hoping to do. I don't want to spend the time going through Substance Painter. Even Quixel Mixer has been very slow. When I've gotten to the actual like painting part, you know, putting in the multiple texture sets and stuff like that, it get, feels good. But at a certain point, uh, depending on the size of texture that you're working on, um, it slows to a crawl pretty quickly, which is very frustrating. You know, when it takes you three seconds to do an undo. up a little bit further tie that shape into that shape let's just try something let's do the cloth nudge I like using the cloth brushes quite a bit because I find that they, they're not perfect. I'm not gonna say they are, but they can give you these nice little bits of detail that you probably wouldn't have gotten before. Now, how does this thing stick like this? I have no idea. There's probably some form of a, a rod in there. I've been really enjoying them. Do a slightly sharper peak on these. I like shoulder pads. Are shoulder pads back in or are they gone again? I think they're gone. Shoulder pads on suits. I saw the big suits are back from the 90s. 
That's disappointing, but shocking. But nobody, I think, wore them to the gala, the Met Gala the other day. All right, so here's before, here's after. We're getting there. You can see the kind of continuous dialing in of where the character's going. So overall, the silhouette is not drastically changed, but there is a change. The side view isn't really being worked on, and the focus, which is fine. And now we're going to dial in the middle part. And when I export this to Unreal, I'll almost certainly do it as an FBX. I'll almost certainly do it as a... Um, a nanite object. So I got all into these swirly shapes, which is kind of one of the things that I tend to do in a lot of my designs. I do some Eternals style stuff. It's kind of cool. I don't know if I really want to do that, but. to put these little circles up here so that I could integrate more. Hello, this looks insane. Thank you. <laughs> How many hours did I put into this already? We are on hour three. Uh, three. This is our second stream. We've done everything live on stream. Um, we're one hour into our stream and we'll be continuing for another hour today. I'm not going to bulk up this part of the body any further. I think I'd like it to kind of go inward. Exploring with this sort of side swoop. breaking up some of the forms. Especially in costume design, I think it's so much better than just doing like this, like, you know, choo, 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 choo. I've definitely been a victim of done that myself many times on personal projects, my own projects. I think I kind of did it on my last project. Uh, the, the magician kind of had that, you know, doing the, the stereotypical shapes, which is kind of fun. You know, I think those shapes are there for a reason. They're kind of fun to do anyways. But I want to try to avoid that if possible. That might work. This is probably where those cloth brushes will come in again. So I'm going to go BC. We'll try Cloth Nudge. Cloth Nudge does some work, but it's not like the most amazing. Unless, you know, it's good if it's brushing up against something, meaning it's nudging something against another thing. Cloth Move is pretty good. And you can use all of these uh, depending on what you want. But like Cloth Fold kind of takes it and actually folds the object. So you see what it's actually doing from like the top view. Which is for this type of an example, pretty cool. Because it basically takes that and twists it. Which is a far more interesting silhouette. Than what we had. And let's even try it here. Cloth fold. Again, I don't really know what's going to be making these shapes or how it would sustain those shapes, but I kind of like the um, 
more an elegant shape. It just feels like it's got a bit more of something to it. So I'm going to keep it. How is it made? No idea. And let's try one more with the uh, cloth pinch is fine. You know, you'll kind of get these nice like pinches in certain areas, especially if you go up at some subdivision levels. You'll see like this. If you want it to pinch. You can get really great fabrics and stuff like that like this. I think I would need a little bit more subdivision level, but it's not going to really let me do it here. You can get some really cool fabric effects like that. Uh, let's see what else we do with the cloth. Nudge we already used. Uh, inflates fine. Hook we could try. Dimple I don't think I've ever really used. I imagine it's what you'd expect. Yeah. It kind of creates a space. I think you maybe want to put one like here or here. Feels like it gets real intense real quick. But it does work. And then cloth hook. I think that was the one that like pulls it. Like you see it like it's rebounding. I don't entirely know what it's doing when it's doing this. I like the more formal shape, even though it makes no sense. Let's just keep it more fantasy rather than try to resolve it into something incredibly specific. Let's thin these arms out a bit. Shrink them a tad. And I think we're getting to some kind of nice stuff. Again, the back is a complete disaster, so we're just going to pretend that doesn't exist. We can even keep this little thing here. That's fine. Seems like a little decorative element into that. do need to kind of resolve what exactly is going on in the costume, so. I use a couple of circles already, and so I'm thinking about maybe duplicating or replicating that. turn on my lazy mouse it's already on but the radius is very 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 short so I like to turn it to around 60 and that gives me this nice smooth stroke so then I can kind of come in and do you know, gestures and strokes we are kind of entering into eternals land which I maybe sort of did on the caregiver which was somewhat intentional but not not as intentional as this maybe
basic and works. It's maybe more interesting. Might help establish like a better sense of where the proportions are. It's kind of odd that the only one side, however. has those details, this off asymmetrical design. It's the only part in the whole design that's asymmetrical. A little weird, maybe, but it's the only part in the design that's asymmetrical. What I could try is this. So I could try to do a, a smart resim. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, it did. Let's see what it looks like if it's mirrored. I'm not losing anything massive. I'm going to go up a subdivision level at a time and then hit smart resim to. Uh, step it up every time rather than do it all at once otherwise it can be very slow as it takes its time doing this you can now see this is the symmetrical version versus the asymmetrical version which I like but I think this is just going to be a little more achievable for the first one We kind of got like this omega symbol going on, which I actually like as sort of like a accidental subversive. Just dialing back some of the more Of angles. Pen and tablet specs, please. I'm using a Intuos 5 Touch. so aggressive though it's like maybe if we wanted to like play around with the idea that there's like some tension or something interesting idea I think there's something there I just don't know how to achieve it right now I'll try that crease though as a crease Still not drawing.
So this is the, uh, you know, before and the after of the costume. We're not done, obviously. we got uh, 45 minutes left in the stream, but I think we'll get pretty close today. anatomy to show underneath and I think just like something a little more simpler and just cushiony feels better and then we can design some of these lines Do the cloth fold again. Kind of experimenting with the brush and seeing what works. How do you find the music playlist? I can show it to you. It is a royalty free fantasy playlist by Yasmin Tim on Spotify. Let's do that cloth move. Oh boy, that was a mistake. Cloth move just doesn't work as well with certain things. stretches that it's creating. This I think better than like the previous version, which had like nothing.
That's the silhouette that we're at right now. Is Archetype the name of the software? No, actually, um, Archetype is the name of the series. So we're making several characters based off of Archetypes. Uh, this being the ruler. And the uh, software is called ZBrush. It's by Maxon, formerly Pixelogic. So another thing that I'm looking at right now, just from a design standpoint, is that this is roughly the same size as this. So I'm going to want to change some of the proportions here. So either the question is, do I want to make this one bigger? This is going to look bad, but do I want to make one bigger? Or do I want to make this one smaller? I think I'm going to make it smaller. So there's not actual uh, body in there, which is part of why I'm trying to figure out exactly how much anatomy to show, because uh, this is one of the characters that I didn't start off using a base mesh with, like a naked body, or a nude body, or just a generic body inside. I've done that with many characters before, and it makes it a little easier kind of to accomplish the thing that I was just looking to do, which is, you know, how... Um, When you're making costumes and all that stuff, like where the body is inside is a key part of that. So you can also just push the legs back. legs is a little weird. It's making some of the shapes feel strange. And again, this is the challenge. If this was multiple sub-tools, I would just take the cape off and I would just look at the dress. I would remove the arms. I would have a, probably a, a base mesh body inside. And that would help me with all of the, you know, proportions and the detail sculpting that I'm kind of struggling with a little bit here right now. But as I said, at the kind of at the top of the stream, there is a plus and minus to the to that. The minus is that time that you invest to do all that uh, is time. So even though we're only three and a half hours into doing this whole sculpt from the very beginning, from scratch. Um, it's probably further along, it is much further along than it would have been if I had done it, you know, and broken up each part and each piece and made it all nice and clean. And so I'm hoping that this is going to pay off for me in the long run. I think it will. Or it'll be a huge disaster. What's my view on hard surface and organic modeling in ZBrush? Which is it which is more effective in it? I think I mean ZBrush was made for organic modeling, so I think just to start, if I had to pick which one's more effective in it, I guess that's what I would pick. But that doesn't mean that hard surface is not effective in ZBrush. Um, I'm not a hard surface master in ZBrush. There's many people who are much better at it than I am in ZBrush, but you can make incredible, incredible things uh, in ZBrush. So that doesn't like you know concern me or freak me out as far as like. Is it something you should use? I think it's definitely something you should you know, learn 
how to use how to use and make hard surface things in ZBrush because it will speed you up significantly and it will look great. So both are correct. Just add a little bit of this sort of like cape drapery folds on the inside of this and kind of at the bottom of the cape or the bottom of the dress there to uh, add some texture. Before, after, after, before. Can I get a look at that? I think I'm happy with this. You know, considering we've worked on it for about three and a half hours, I feel pretty good about where we're at. Um, I kind of want to just start the Unreal project. I think that's really going to be the next phase, you know, winning, like, I know that I have the idea of just kind of this, right? And I think, you know, especially comparing, I'll just uh, plop over, I'll copy and clone this. I think the idea is probably going to be the same, so I don't know if I really need to do this, but. Oh, I already did it. So the, the costume is still working in there. I like the new costume more anyways. Um, now I can come in and define the shapes and the world around it a little bit better. Some of this will be um, Quixel Mega Scans. I guess I should come in here and do a little bit of work on the boots. I'm going to do a full portrait. Uh, I guess I'll just do like a little. Thing. When is this game coming out? <laughs> you like the color scheme of my ZBrush UI? Thank you. I purchased it on ArtStation. Uh, there was somebody I saw that was doing a pack of them, and they have a whole selection. So I checked that out. There's all kinds of cool stuff on that marketplace. It wasn't too much, it was like five bucks for like 20, 20 different colors, so you know, depending on what vibe you're in. This is probably going to be very, very painterly when I get to this aspect of the, of the illustration, so I'm just going to do a hint of some form of something. I did want it to be a full boot. I don't want it to be like a, a foot. So this is a poorly made shoe, but it will have texture and it will be fine. And I'll just do this. Flatten that real quick. So that when we see this, Let's open Unreal. I guess I didn't download the new, new, new version of Unreal, meaning the actual version of Unreal. I should probably do that. We'll install that now. It's probably going to take forever, though, huh? Yeah. We'll cross our fingers and hope this doesn't crash our stream and take two, 
too long. In the meantime, while I'm doing that, we'll see if it even can do it. I can do an early access, worst case. Uh, I'm going to export all of this as an FBX just to kind of get things going. The way you do that is you go to your Z plugin. So I'm going to hit this over to the side so we have access to it. I'm going to go to my FBX exporter, which is here. But before I do that, I'm going to save. I always like to save. I always like to make new versions, so I'm saving. And then I'm also going to go save as. Again, I'm going to make a new version of this, and at the end I'm going to hit type DEC for decimated. The reason I'm doing decimated is not because there's anything major here, but there's just this kind of one piece here and one piece here that I probably want to decimate. They don't need to be. The whole scene's only 2 million. But if I'm going to do nanite objects, that might be a pain. But either way, we'll skip the decimation for today. And uh, we're waiting for 19 gigs to be installed, so I don't know if this is really going to happen today on stream. We're going to do uh, all subtools. Uh, we're going to do smooth the normals. It's a little hard to see with this color. Even this is hard to see. Smoothing normals. Visible. 16-bit. Uh, I just used JPEGs on this. And we'll use pings. Uh, and then we want to make sure that the normals are smooth. If we're embedding any texture maps, you want to have this on. We're not doing that though. Not for this one. And then uh, we'll export this thing. Just hit export. It's going to ask you where you want to save it, I'm going to put it in a folder for me, which I'm just calling FBXs. I'm going to call this the ruler size test one. It's going to go through each one of these and it's going to export it and do its thing. I got a comment from YouTube. You love my workflow a lot. It's so inspiring. Thank you very much. Even at this experience stage, is it necessary for you to sketch on paper or do I directly sculpt my ideas in ZBrush? Really good question. Uh, often, most of the times, I will start in ZBrush. But if you go back and actually watch some of the more previous, earlier um, streams that we did, there's no way that's done already. Yeah, it's not done. Um, it will, you'll see that I do a couple sketches. Uh, most of the sketches that I do are specifically for myself, uh, meaning they're nothing I would really show to a client or show to a director or anything like that. But they're more for me to know like what the final uh, composition of the illustration might look like, what the uh, composition is, what's, who the characters are, very quick loose gestural sketches to get moving on the character to have an understanding of what general shapes and proportions could be but I never do line sketches value studies I rarely do any of that stuff so it's kind of more just like what it could look like rather than what it will look like if that makes sense so this is doing its thing I'm not going to let this Unreal thing finish I'm just going to launch Unreal 5 Early Access 2. Uh, I'll probably, before the next stream, I will uh, get everything in the proper newest version. Looks like this is all done. Exporting. So we'll import this into Unreal here in just a sec. Do I have next year's archetype schedule project planned already? No. No, no, I do not. I just saw the Epic logo flash. It should be here in a second. Crossing my fingers that what I'm saying is actually happening. There we go.
Let's go ahead and just load a blank third person. I'll put this, I'm just putting data over here. Not, nothing's super important to everybody. Setting up my file, hitting create, creating the project. The uh, pop-up is on my other window, so we're uploading or loading up, booting up, what's the right word? We're booting up Unreal 5 right now. Here it is. We're in Unreal 5 now. And we're going to get some stuff in here. I do want to go to my bridge. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I've probably already downloaded before, and I want to try something and see if this will work. I'm going to go into my archetype folder. I'm going to open up like my caregiver folder in a new one. And if I go into my Unreal, this is within my Unreal folder here. For my caregiver folder. And this is my new Unreal folder for ruler. So magician, ruler. Uh, I want to get like some of this content, specifically like these mega scans. You see I have a bunch of assets and stuff in here. I want to see if I can just copy this. Copy into this and see what happens. It's obviously 13 gigs of files, so it's going to take a bit for it to do that. So I'm actually going to stop that. Mega scans. Let's just pick one. See what happens. See if this works this fast. I know you can migrate things in, but I've been, again, I'm trying to find a faster way of rather just drag and drop everything in if that's possible into a new scene. Let's see if this thing works. Well, the texture's not coming in, but the asset came in. I don't think that's because it's compiling, though. So it didn't bring in the textures. I wonder how I can do this in an easier way. The thing that I'm struggling with with using Unreal 5 is... Um, I don't feel like I have a good startup scene, you know? Like part of me wants to just like come in here, open up like this whole file, which I'm doing now. And then once that's loaded up, I kind of just want to like use that scene again because I've downloaded all these things like what I could do right now for example if I come into to content hide this for a second I go into content I go to the Quixel bridge I load all this stuff up in this is in Unreal 5 this is things I've got already these are all my local assets I can come in here and I can populate these again if you've seen the stream you've probably seen me do this several times already where I'd come in and I'd say you know click on this I want it to be signed in Games. Okay. Should be signing in now. Okay, local. Let's just take another big mountain. This was a big one I used. Nanite, add. I can do this. The problem is it just takes a long time. This is my least favorite part about using Unreal is every time I go in to make a new, I want to make a new scene with a new setup. I've already clicked go, right? Now I need to, this is the one I deleted. Now it's made it and it's going to work. Maybe not that one the other one but this one will work right i can do that 
this is easy. This is fun. And I like doing this, but it's kind of a pain to, to do it every time. Frankly, it is a pain to do it every time. This takes a while and you have to download all those objects to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder. New folder. We're going to call this not in this area, though. In our content folder, move here. I'm going to rename this ruler. In ruler, we're going to make a new level called ruler main. We're now going to go inside the level. Do you want to save? Mm, no. Great, there's nothing in here. We're going to do a create. Just make a cube. There's a cube. Congrats, everybody. We've done it. It is completely pitch black. The way we need to get this is we need to go to our window. I believe it's window. Environment light mixer. You can also drag and drop other things in here. You basically click these three or four. Bump, 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 bump. You can make clouds too if you want. Now we see that there's light on the cube. So before there wasn't light on the cube, and now there is light on the cube. So now I'm going to take that mega scan, drag it and drop it in here. And we got this. If we take, these are all kind of stacked up on top of each other. They'll kind of do different things. I'm also going to go to my window, go to my world outliner. This shows me what I'm actually looking at. So there's a directional light one and directional light two. Just turning this stuff all on now. We can see there's a distance. As we change this, things will change. Why there's two. Right? So nighttime, evening time, whatever time we want it to be. This is all sort of the power of what Unreal's doing for us here. How fast this is. This is a super high level geometry, all that kind of fun stuff. So we can create something kind of cool. And even if you are in these dark shadows, uh, it should be fixing it later. But some pretty cool stuff. Sky atmosphere. Let's turn that off and on. Uh, something I wanted to get real quick, though, was the... Oh, this was the previous scene. I'm closing that now. Environment light mixer. Where are you? music is so ominous I want my light mixer oh there it is I want this to be minimal settings which is still a ton I think it's the real time capture Turning on some features. Let's see, let's see what we got now. Now you can see that I've kind of adjusted that, that they, even though this is a single uh, light source over here, that this area even though if there is a really harsh shadow uh, it's more ambient because of the sky and all that stuff so it's a little better in that regard pretty cool though just how powerful this is uh, I've been using uh, another oh looks like my stream popped out for a second hello everybody I'm back 
I quite, I quite like this. We'll continue using this. But for now, what I'm going to do is just get everything kind of in. Uh, I can always change things later. So in my ruler folder, I'm also going to make a new folder called uh, FPX test. That's not how you spell test. And here, I'm going to go to my files. Here's my FBX. I'm going to drag and drop it in here. And it's going to ask me some questions. I want to make this a nanite object. I'm not going to adjust anything else. I'm going to hit import all. This will take a little bit of a minute. It's about uh, 100 megabytes, so it's not crazy high, but it's not crazy small. Uh, following up on your question from YouTube, uh, the point is now, you know, my I've spent a lot of time doing anatomy studies and just general studies of like fundamental things, so I don't feel like I need to start from the very beginning every time when I do that. Uh, but that's probably a lot of practice. It is a lot of practice, right? Of how much time I've spent uh, building up those tools and that the muscle memory and all that, being able to do that. Um, I also, I think I'm different than some other artists where I prefer and I've always felt more comfortable sculpting as opposed to people who feel more comfortable drawing. Uh, I kind of learned how, how to resolve forms uh, earlier in my life using clay and Sculpey and things like that rather than using pencils and ink and all that. So for me, it's just been easier to resolve forms with uh, sculpture rather than and understanding things via sculpture rather than just uh, drawing them and then translating them so my process is based around my skill set so whatever your process is should be based around your skill set all right so all these pieces are in here now i'm going to drag and drop these in so you can see we kind of have the same thing right which is good there, sh there they are Very small. Go to our details panel. Notice that they all have been off put from the opening. That's because I drag and drop them in. If I hit zero, 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 it will move them all to the center. But what you'll notice is that now they'll all get stacked on top of each other. Oh, maybe not. We're perfect then. Never mind. Disregard that. We're going to move this thing because it's at the center. This is kind of what I was saying as far as like what these objects are that are in the background don't really matter. Meaning I can come in here now and just like delete individual sections of this. And come in and figure this out. We can uh, populate some of this very quickly. I'm going to turn down my speed of this uh, quite a bit. Usually I work at two. I'm going to show the grid. Can you hide the grid? And then I'm going to go back to my content browser. Sorry, my uh, bridge. Not this one, but the other one. That's in Unreal. I'm going to find some more local assets that I want to try to use here. I'll probably pull some different mountain ranges. I've used these already a couple times. But we'll add a couple to begin with. And then I was almost going to use this before, but it was too different. It wasn't working as well as I wanted it to be before. So I'm actually going to grab this here. I'm going to add this. These are all things I used in the previous projects. So the nice thing is that once you download them, they're already kind of there. this before too. 
So I'm trying to move it around in case you can't tell, but this is, you know, to be frank, one of my biggest frustrations with this is that the adding and, you know, the curation of all this stuff can take a little bit of time. The scale, I think, of my object is quite small right now. So it might be worth me uh, scaling this up. I think it's this button. Nope. There's a way to drag select and then we can scale them all up. Let's just scale them up by like 100. That way we're dealing with something quite a bit larger. I think the head is now gone now. I don't entirely know how that happened. Oh, the head was gone to begin with. No, it wasn't selected. Aha! Something is going on. We'll just select them in the outliner. The head is already there, right? There's not like some thing that's happening. Okay. We'll just do bit 10. Let's see how that feels when we bring in something a little better. Probably just delete all this and come in and just like create um, shapes and just like maybe make a plane. And then from here, what I'll do is I'll go back into the bridge. Surfaces. This is one I quite liked. So I could always just come in here and search for like marble surfaces. Find something I like, download it, toss it in here. I'm sure I will do this later. But I think I got this one. So for now, we'll run with this. This is what I used on the Sage before as well. Just like the the what's the right word well, i want this to be a cube
I'm so remiss for you. So I think we'll get a new thing up here. Let's put it like this. Let's go back into the content browser one more time. Let's check out my locals. We'll be done here in just a minute, everybody. Uh, we will be having another amazing uh, event for May the 4th today. And May the 4th be with you. Um, we'll be having a really awesome event very shortly, uh, one hour after the stream ends. So basically one hour from now. So highly recommend checking that out. see it because of the light does it look like what I think it looks like yep that's fine you could also take like you can also take these other things and toss them on here even though it's not like the right texture for certain instances, it might like have a better vibe of like what you want the space to feel like. You know, meaning like if I just did a shot like this, nobody's gonna care. If there's weird textures on it, I'll fix it later. In fact, I kind of prefer that. Uh, let's get this last big one. Let's bring this in real quick. similar thing meaning like I'll just grab this pull it over here Super lazy and dirty and just take this whole thing and toss it on here. What does that look like? Oh, it looks hideous. This is much better. Alright, so that obviously needs some color. We'll use tan for now. Maybe we could try like, what does this look like? So it's not a pure white object. Get that last beach in here. Maybe this is like built into the cliffs. I would probably spend, and I will spend, over the next two streams, we're going to wrap up this character. We'll spend some more time wrapping this up, figuring out exactly what the composition is going to be, what the lens is going to be. And we'll have a lot more time to play with this, which will be fun. We're actually going to wrap up our stream now. And again, like I said, we'll be having another stream in just about one hour from now, starting at 1 p.m. Uh, with Brian Matias from ILM. Uh, designer on Mandalorian and a bunch of other cool, amazing things. So come check him out. Yep. And uh, yeah, have a fun Star Wars day. So this is where we're going to wrap up for today, everybody. Thank you all for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to continue playing with this, as I said, over the next several streams. Trying to kind of figure out maybe what our 
mood and direction of this whole piece is going to be. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a cool one. Perfect. All right, y'all. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you all in about an hour. Thanks, bye.